بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so the next thing we'll talk about osp of router id like before we go ahead with the later on process like previously we have seen the initialized stage and the two way stage and then they establish the neighbor relationship before they start exchange the database but before we move on to the exchange state we also need to understand uh, something called router id now router id is a name of a router inside the ospf like let's say i'm i'm having multiple routers here every router will be identified with some name and that name we call it as router id so typically the router id will be 32 bit number similar to ip address the same like ip address and it uniquely identify that particular router inside the ospf of database and in general when when we talk about uh, router id when we talk about router let's say this example the router 2 is having three connections one three three directions let's say and if i'm coming from this side generally we say the name of the router is this ip if you are coming from this side typically we say this is the name of the ip or name of the router like the name in the sense like ip address but in case of ospf the the ospf database inside the ospf database basically the router has to be identified with only one unique name and that name we call it as a router id like in this example you can see the router 1 is having many interfaces but now the question is which one will be the router id so by default the preference will be given based on the manual so we can manually go to inside the router and we can configure the router id with a command so there is a command called router id will verify this configuration and verifications uh, probably because i need to explain few more things before that so basically this is a command like i am saying this should be the router id of this router 1 let's say this is on the router 1 we can manually decide that and this address can be any address you can type in any ip v4 address you can write down like any class d class e address also you can write any address doesn't make any difference so you can write down any address as a router id and let's say if i don't configure this because most of the time you generally don't configure the router ids if i don't configure the router id then automatically the router will decide the highest ip of the loopback interface now basically the loopback interface is kind of logical interface like we can go and create a loopback interface there is something called logical interface it's not a physical and we can give the ip address something any any address you can type in let's say i'm giving some address like this if you verify here show ip interface brief now we can see here this is my physical interface these are all my physical interfaces and also they have ip addresses which are physical interfaces means we can connect these interfaces to some other devices but whereas the logical interface or like these are the logical interfaces logical interfaces are like there is no connection to them so loopback is like a logical interface uh, which are generally used to kind of simulate additional interfaces or or for some kind of bgp neighborship or later on sections you will see the purpose of this but generally in case if you have any loopback interface configured let's say if you have then automatically it will take the highest ip of the loopback interface like in this example uh, let's assume this is my router 1 it is having two physical interfaces these are two physical interfaces the red ones and i got two loopback interfaces so the blue ones or the logical loopback interface is created like loopback 0 or loopback 1 any number it can be so it's going to automatically see the highest ip of the loopback interface which means out of these two which is the highest so the first portion 11 or 1 which is the highest one so 11 is the highest so assuming the manual is not configured then automatically the router will decide the router id based on the highest loopback interface so which means in this example the router id will be 11.11.11.11 of the router 1 so by default that will be the router id and let's assume that if there is no loopback interface also configured 
like assume there is no loopback interface here. So I did not configure the manual. Assume we did not configure this because by default we may not configure. And assume there is no loopback interface created also. So we, we didn't create any loopback because we we have we have generally seen in, well, maybe you don't require. Then in that case, what will be the router ID? Now the router ID will be by default selected based on the highest IP of the physical interface. So which means out of the physical interfaces, what we have, like here you can see 1.1 and 11.1. Of course, the first portion is same. Then it will check the second portion. If the second portion is same, then it will check the third portion. So assuming the loopbacks are not present and the manual is not present, then this will become the router ID. Like in my example, if you check this example here, if you check on the router one, of course, I had to clear the process because, because I have created a loopback later on. Like in this example, if I say show IP protocols, you can use uh, specific commands to verify like show IP protocols or I can use show IP OSP of neighbor. Like in this example, any one router, you can go ahead. And if I say show IP protocols, you can see in the fourth or fifth line, the router ID by default, it selects here, this one. Uh, basically, it's not working here, but normally if you have a loop back, then you expect the router ID should be this one, not this one, okay? So in packet tracer, it doesn't support, but on the on the physical devices or, or on the GNS3 tools, if you're using some advanced. So basically here, it selects the router ID. So maybe I need to remove the OSPF and reconfigure in that case, but normally I expect this should be the router ID. But one more thing you need to keep in mind, you have to clear the process. So in my case, let's say if I say show IP protocols on the router of one, Let's say I'll verify on the router one, and here the router ID is 192.168.1.100. And if I verify the interfaces, what we have, like if I say show IP interface brief, and here I got only two interfaces configured one is 192.168.1. These two, these two are physical interfaces, and physical interfaces. Uh, automatically there is no first option is man, manual I did not configure manual the second option is loopback and the third option is uh, highest IP of the physical interface so in this case the first two options are not this so it is automatically selecting the highest IP of the physical interface even if you verify you can also verify this based on the neighbor table you can see it shows you the neighbor address is this is the router ID of the router to the neighbor, the neighbor router. So again, I can go and change the router ID. Again, uh, I will be seeing this later on. Like I can simply go and say router ID, but make sure that you need to clear the process, uh, clear IPOS for process. This is required whenever you make any changes. Now you can see the router ID changes to 1.1.1.1. Because remember, whenever you make any changes to OSPF, uh, because the process has already started because this process has already started and finished So when you are changing the router ID you have to reset the OSPF So in the production networks also, let's say if you are trying to change the router ID Like in this case, I try to do that You can see a message says that reload the router Of course, I have to save the configs and reload the router to make sure that the new router ID uh, changes on the router one as well as it will update the neighbors but reloading is not a good solution. You can use other options like clear IP OSP process. This command also will disconnect the neighbors and reconnect, just like disconnecting the neighbor. You can see the neighbor goes from full to down and again it will come up. So you can also do that. Clear IP OSP process, it says, do you really want to reset? Yes, I want to do that. Then it will disconnect the neighbors and start the process from the beginning. Beginning means like, Downstage, initialized stage, two way stage, like that, it will go on. Okay, so this is the default process. So always remember the router ID will be selected manually if you configure manual. This is the first preference. And if this is not configured, then it will see the loopback interfaces. If there is a loopback, 
it will select automatically the highest IP of the loopback. Means if you have two, three, four loopback interfaces, in that it will see which one is the highest. It will select from the loopback. And if there is no loopback interface also present, then it will automatically select based on the physical interface addresses. And again, uh, there are a few more things. Default highest IP of the physical interface. So why is it default? Because default, we don't configure. Default, there is no loopback interfaces most of the time. So that's the reason I said default, it uses this. And one more thing relating to route ready you need to know is the route ready must be unique in the OSPF process. Which means uh, it must be unique within the OSPF domain, sorry. It must be, which means if I'm connecting three routers and I'm running OSPF, let's say if I'm using the route ready of this router one is 1.1.1.1, .1 make sure that you are not repeating the route ready here. So which means the route ready of the router two should be different and the router three also should be different. And maybe if you are connecting a router four, make sure that you are not giving the router ID which is already given to specific router. So this must be unique. So in case if I try to give the same router ID for two routers, then that will impact the OSPF database and that can also impact the communication. So this is wrong. So you have to use a unique router ID, any, anything, any address, but it must be unique. So the router ID must be unique within the domain, uh, must be unique within the OSPF domain. That's what it says. And also the router ID must be unique uh, between the process on the same router. Again, process means this is more on the advanced when you're running uh, multiple OSPF instances. We'll talk about this in the OSPF instance. So if you are running two OSPFs on the same router, like OSPF1 and OSPF2, again, you have to use different router IDs like 1.1.1.1 and 2.2.2.2 here. Again, why we run multiple instances of OSPF, I'll talk about this in the configuration examples. But if you're running two OSPFs on the same router, then let's say OSPF1 and OSPF2, again, the router ID should be different. So you cannot use same router ID for two OSPF instances on the same router. Or another example, as I said, you cannot use the same router ID in the OSPF domain. So every router must have a unique, different router ID again. 